This video will show you the installation procedures for the standardized cable handling system from ITT Flight. The main part has been recorded at this shipyard in Hamar, Norway. But since this installation is in glass fiber tubes, we will also show the cable entry section on welded tubes. The cable handling system consists of cable support grips, shackles, wire with timbles, wire clips, vulcanizing rubber tape, protection tape, plastic pipes, the beam with the holder unit, and the lifting eyeball units. The cable entry parts are rock systems, wedge, stay plates, modules including the frame with gasket, screws, washers and nuts for welded tubes. Start by finding a place for the pumps where the cables can be stretched out. Put the cables straight out from the pump. Find something to support the cables and to lift them up to the same height as the cable entry. This is done in order to prevent the cables from bending. Make sure that the three wire clips are tightened properly and are turned away from the cables and that the thimble and shackle are well connected. Slide the number of plastic tubes necessary for the installation over the wire. One plastic tube per meter, that is 1000 millimeters. Connect the wire to the pump's lifting eye bolt and tighten firmly. Once again, make sure that the nuts on the wire clips are turned away from the cables. Measure the location for the first plastic tube, which shall be 500 millimeters away from the lifting eye bolt. Make sure that the cables are parallel. Start by wrapping the vulcanizing rubber tape one turn around the plastic tube. Then locate the wire, the tube and the cables and keep wrapping on the vulcanizing rubber. Do not stretch the rubber tape, let it fall in place. When the vulcanizing rubber tape has been wrapped one turn around the cables, continue with one quarter of a turn for overlap. Do not stretch. Now it's time to wrap the protective tape over the volcanic rubber. Stretch the tape and wrap with 50% overlap, one time both ways. The last 150 millimeters shall not be stretched. Let this part fall in place. The rest of the wrappings shall be done with a distance of 1000 millimeters between the plastic tube's center parts. The number of tubes required is dependent on the depth of your installation. Please refer to your installation drawing. Make sure that the cables and the wire are parallel all through this operation. Now it's time to move the pump to its place of installation. In this case, this dry dock. This is the intake to these pumps. 
and here we can see the two glass fiber tubes where the pumps are going to be installed. Put the pumps down and stretch out the wrapped cables. Now we will measure the height to where the cable support grips are going to be located. Mark the spot. Slide the cable support grips over the power cables and over the auxiliary cable. Slide them down to the marking. Fasten a sling around the cables and connect it to the crane's lifting chain. Make sure that the length of the crane's lifting chain is shorter than that of the cables. We do not want to lift the pump in its cables. Wrap some tape around the cable support grips to keep them in place. Now it's time to install the pumps. Make sure that the cables are correctly located. In this case, the cables shall be put on a cable rack to the switch box. Tighten the holder unit to the beam. Make sure it's mounted firmly in place. Put the beam with its holder unit in place. Get the lifting eye bolt units. Unscrew the lock nut and unscrew the other nut as much as possible without removing it. The unit with the core spring is for the wire and the others are for the cables. Mount the shackles on the lifting eye bolt units. Put the lifting eye bolt units for the cables with shackles in place. Mount the cable support grips and pull them down as much as possible. Another adjustment of the cable support grips may be necessary if the thread of the lifting eye bolts are insufficient for final adjustment. Twist the cable support grips, giving the cable a straight way out through the cable seal. Tighten the shackle screws firmly. Now it's time to adjust the length of the wire. Start by stretching the wire. Make a loop and mount one of the three wire clips. Tighten to a point where it's hard to move, but still movable. Mount the thimble. Knock the wire clip in position and tighten. Check the length of the wire one more time. Put the wire's lifting eye bolt unit in place. Tighten the shackle screw firmly. Mount the other two wire clips. If the wire is going to be cut with a grinder, wrap both sides of the cutting point with tape to keep the wire from twisting. You can also use a bolt clipper, cutter or likewise. To obtain the right tension for the cables and the wire, we have to refer to the diagram on the drawing. Find the dimension of the cables, check the length. The figure where these parameters intercede is the measure between the washers on the lifting eye bolt unit. The same goes for the wire, diameter and length. Turn the adjusting nut until the desired dimension measure is achieved between the two plates. Use a sliding caliper or a measure tape to check the dimension. Lock with a holder nut. Remember to readjust these dimensions after two to three weeks of operation. Now it's time for the cable entry. We will start to show how this is done on welded tubes. Mount the frame with its gasket. Make sure that the head of the bolts and the copper washers are on the inside of the tube. Before tightening the bolts, adjust the height of the frame.
tighten the screws and check the height once again. Grease the frame and the wedge all around. Put the wedge in position. The text on the wedge will show you which side is facing upwards. Put the stay plate in position. The cable seals consists of ROX modules fitting all cable dimensions used by flight. As shown in this animation, it's very easy to use. Remove the plug and measure one half of the cable. Remove as many layers needed to obtain the right radius. Repeat this with the other half of the module. The distance between the two halves shall be 0 0.1 to 1 mm. Back to Norway and the glass fiber installation, where the frame is a part of the tube. Grease the inside and the outside of the lower parts of the modules and put them in place. Put the power cables in position. Grease the other halves of the modules and put them in place. Mount the next stay plate. In this case, one module will be without cable. Grease the plug in the inside and outside of the module and put it in place. And finally, the auxiliary cable. Time for the cover to be mounted. It's always important to keep the surfaces clean. If you have followed the procedures in this video, the cables should be hanging straight down in the tubes. Put the gasket and the lid in place. And tighten the bolts. When the gasket on the welded tubes is mounted, Make sure that the holes for the cable entry is in the right place. Put on the lid. Mount all the bolts. And screw them in place. Last but not least, tighten the rock wedge bolts. Tighten them to the bottom, but do not exceed 20 newton meters of torque. Another pumping operation, ready to go, from flight. <laughs>